Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and Avengers Wakanda Forever part, well, whatever. Uh, it's a, it, it's not even a one shot. Avengers and that followed the X-Men and that followed Spider-Man. It's Wakanda Forever featuring the Avengers. It says number one. It's actually part three in the story. They really should have labeled this a whole lot better. A whole lot better. <laughs> anyway, um, this was a pretty enjoyable issue. Let's, uh, let's get to who actually did this. Writer Nettie Akorfor, artist Oleg Okunev, uh, colorist Eric Arkanega, and letterers VCs Joe Sabino. The uh, Dodsons, once again this week, did another cover, loving it. And um, uh, Yasmin Putri did a, a variant cover. So, um, first off, Akorfor, oops, my bad, sorry. <laughs> I, I, back in... Um, uh, on Tuesday when I did the This Week in Comics, I couldn't remember how to pronounce her freaking last name, which is just, duh, it's actually really easy. But um, anyway, I, I remembered her first name. I feel bad. <laughs> so um, this this comic in and of itself was pretty good. I like that there was some closure brought to a good amount of story here. I like that the, uh, I don't know if all of the narration, the narrator's boxes were done by Nettie, but I do know that the one particular, which talked about the origins of, or at least where you can find the origins for Nakia, were in fact actually in the, um, were actually done by her. So I dug that she was able to do that. <clears throat> uh, it also indicates that she's probably read all of Christopher Priest's run. Uh, I imagine she's probably read all of the runs on, um, on Black Panther. I feel so bad for her if she had to read the uh, the Solomon's Frogs thing. Just, <laughs> I know I make fun of that every time I talk about Black Panther, but God, was that ever bad. <laughs> An important character or three were introduced, but come on, man. So, um, I the thing is that even though there was an explanation given here, and this was kind of a pretty cool ending in many ways, like it was, a, it was the Dora Milaje welcoming back one of their own um, I, there were some things that just didn't quite work for me. One of the things that did, that, that didn't work for me was that she was welcomed back in the end. And I'm not going to tell you how she was welcomed back. Go out and buy the comic book if you want to know for sure. Uh, digital or physical copy. I'd go with digital personally. But, um, I, I didn't like the end of it because of all the evil that she'd done. And make no mistake, it was straight evil. And I know she had a really crappy childhood, but when push comes to shove, sorry, which of the Dora didn't have a crappy back uh, background? And I mean, at the end of the day, we all make our decisions, we all make our choices. And yes, we can all come from bad backgrounds, but we're the ones that make the decisions to do what we do. And Nakia has killed many, many people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she's done some horrible things, but she's that includes killing, straight murdering people. And, uh, you know, like I, I really sat after I read this before I, I did this, uh, started up this um, review to think, like, is this just the American in me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm in Canada now, got my landed papers, I'm good, I'm trying to go more Canadian, trying to go more worldly, you know what I'm saying? Been to many parts of the world where they don't think this way, like like we do in America. But, you know, in America we have this, this so-called justice system where it's not anything more than a punitive system. We're not looking to reform criminals or anything like that. And I, I'm trying to keep that in mind as I'm trying to come to grasp with the treatment of Nakia in this, the fact that she was brought back into the fold. I feel like she wasn't worthy of being brought back into the fold. I just don't. One good act to rectify one bad that your your most recent bad thing that you've done doesn't rec like did she rectify all the other things that she's done? Did she bring all those people back to life? Did she apologize for using the Jinforo to 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 enslave all these different men and whatnot. Uh, oh, well, she was poisoned by the, uh, the Jinforo itself. Yeah, it's cute. That's, that's really great. But if you smoke cigarettes and, and, uh, I wind up getting secondhand smoke, you're not 
justified. You're, you're, you're not freed of the sin of, of causing me, you know, cancer through secondhand smoke just because you get cancer also. No, you're responsible for both. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. That's that doesn't sit well with me. And I'm just going to let it slide because it is what it is. Um, a lot of the characters that were in here and and, and mind you, I, 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 I advise myself as I'm advising anybody else who, who has similar problems. Nnedi Okorafor is not a comic book writer historically. All right. She's fairly new. She's very new, realistically, to writing comic books. And everybody deserves a chance to kind of get into that. And I know so many writers who have gotten into the, you know, the habit of explaining, listen, it, it's one thing, you know, you've always been writing novels or even uh, uh, nonfiction work, just whatever you're writing, it's very different to come into comic books where you have to isolate things and you have to do more word balloons and smaller text as opposed to just which, what would basically amount to exposition the entire time. This is a very different medium and it is hard to get into. You know, the, the idea that comic books are childish is asinine. All right, because we grew up with comic books. I imagine most of us who are, who are watching this review or or making our own uh, assessments, we've grown up with comic books, and we understand that no, comic books absolutely are not a childish medium. Uh, they haven't been since the golden age of comic books, for crying out loud. So, uh, and Marvel really solidified that. But the point is that um, though it is harder to get into the idea of comic books. Uh, and writing comic books as opposed to the novels that Nettie has written before. And apparently they're very good novels. Uh, the, the, the Binti, I think they're called. The, I think it's a trilogy. I, all I ever see is good things about the, uh, the trilogy. But um, the idea for me is that it, it's one thing to not know or to not really have your, your, uh, your, your teeth cut in writing comic books. It's also the idea that some of these characters are not understood very well at all. Um, for Captain America to be so useless in this, I was really disappointed. While she certainly had some fun with Nightcrawler, and I could tell that she really does like the Nightcrawler character, I can also tell that she's kind of new with the Nightcrawler character in some regards. You know what I'm saying? In some regards. Because I, I think that, like, he's fought teleporters before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All, again, all of these things are little things I can let go. Including, like, my, my most annoying gripe that I've got about this comic book is that, um, what was it? Mimic 27 was finally given an origin. Which is cool. I love the idea that anything is given an origin story. That's cool and it's very noble. She could have literally just left this as, oh no, there's a secret with the Dormelage. Just let it go. Let it go. Uh, that could have easily happened and that would have been perfectly acceptable, but she chose to give us an origin for it. The problem is that with the name, the origin of the name, Mimic 27, because it mimics stuff and there was 27 pounds of it found. Interesting. In my opinion, though, this was in Wakanda that it was found. Um, I, you know, like I'm, I'm a former electrical engineer, man, and uh, I've always kind of grown up with the idea that Wakanda, the the home of the smartest people on the face of the planet, would not follow a jackassian system other than uh, metric. You know what I'm saying? So weights and measures, I believe, would be metric with them. Distance, I'm pretty sure, would be metric with them. Uh, I'm pretty sure they'd be following Celsius, not freaking Fahrenheit. You know what I'm saying? Just along those lines. The idea that it was, it was 27 pounds as opposed to kilos, I know it's just a little gripe, but it, it's something that really, like... It's grating at the back of my neck. I'm like, okay, no, no, no. She would, they would not use pounds. Pounds is stupid. What is pounds based on? Exactly. It's based on nothing. It's stupid. And just, just for one day, try metric and you'll see how much better it is. Just one day. That's all it takes, man. That's all it takes. So, <laughs> and, and, and what the hell is Fahrenheit based on? Nothing. What is it? 32 degrees Fahrenheit for, uh, for water freezing. Uh, 75 degrees Fahrenheit is room temperature and, and what is it? 212 degrees is freaking, if I'm remembering correctly, is freaking water boiling? No. How about zero Celsius is, bo uh, is boiling, 25 is room temperature and 100 is boiling. Doesn't that make a whole lot of sense? Yes. Why? Well, yes, it does. So <laughs> I, I can't imagine 
the smartest, the, the country with the most technological advancements, the nation with the most technological advancements ever, not just in engineering like Tony Stark, but in all of the sciences, all right? I can't believe that they would follow something as silly as pounds. Sorry, pet peeve. I can't, I, I can't, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> also, the art in this. While sometimes it was pretty good, and dude, the backgrounds on this were fantastic. I have zero gripes with the backgrounds on this. But certain of the characters, um, while the body shapes were done wrong in some regards, like a, like they, they just looked wrong. Look at the part where Captain America gets punched. It looks like he was stretched, you know, by, by Play-Doh. But more than that, movement. Movement was was just not captured in here very well. People standing around looking cool looked cool, all right? For the most part, it looked pretty cool. The second that any movement was put into this, just not great at all. And um, and I get it. New writer, you're not going to get the greatest, you know, of, of the artists. And this isn't... This isn't meant to insult anybody. I really hope that nobody's being insulted, okay? Dude, I'm on YouTube, all right? Do you think that, that nobody has sat there and insulted? I, get, I still get comments talking about, you know, worst reviewer ever. Okay, bye. <laughs> let, it, let it slide right off your back, brother, because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Criticism happens. Six years in the military. I can't even begin to tell you how much I was criticized just in basic training alone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and yet somehow I'm still alive. So I'm I'm not here to try and bash anybody. I'm pointing out here's here's some things that I would like to see worked upon. That's it. That's it. That's it. I wish I could draw backgrounds like this because damn, this is good. There. Okay. Are are we good? <laughs> so all in all, I kind of dug it, but. Again, this is a comic book. So having characters just standing around. Not great. Not not a good idea. Characters have to be doing something. They have to be doing something. And working with your artist and, and getting your artist to, you know, like like communicating with your artist better in order to have the, the that artist tell a story with the art as opposed to just showing the characters on a freaking panel. Okay, these characters are going to be here on the panel. What are they going to be doing? You're not telling me? Okay, I'm literally just going to have them on the panel because I get paid no matter what, right? So you, you got to be able to work with your artists and say, I need the characters to be doing this and expressing this. Look, Vin Diesel, when he played Groot, all right, he was just voice acting. He didn't get a, you know, he wasn't told, okay, just say I am Groot a billion times in different ways. No, he was given a script just like everybody else was given. And with his script, he, it was written in exactly what Groot was saying. And he simply had to say, I am Groot instead of, what those things said. So he was still fully acting. It was still in there. The emotion was still given there. The, 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 the crux of the story was still given in every single, I am Groot, I am Groot, I am Groot. You know what I'm saying? All of that, it was, it was all given. And, and of course, the one that's going to make everybody cry every time, we are Groot. Oh man, damn it, that was good. Okay, but the point is, I think you get my point. <laughs> You got to communicate with the artist better in order to have more story being told than just what you're writing. And that, I think that that alone would have made this comic book a lot better. Anyway, um, like I said, pretty decent ending for all intents and purposes. Uh, at least the prior stories were read. I could tell that, but this, this comic book could have been a whole lot better. It could have been a whole lot better, but it is what it is. Um is what it is. I am, however, looking forward to seeing uh, Shuri. Uh, uh, Nettie Okorafor is going to be writing Shuri, and that comes out in October with art by Leonardo Romero. I don't know how good that art's going to be. The cover looks great. The, the, the main cover looks great by uh, Sam Spratt. I don't know who's doing that variant cover, but that actually looks really good. Uh, I was kind of hoping that we get a return of Ken Lashley doing some some uh, art for this, but whatever, we'll see. I'm sure that Romero will do just just fine. Anyway, um, one of the best characters out there, Shuri. So hopefully, like everything that Nettie has been writing so far, Doctor Nettie has been writing so far, 
has been in the world of Wakanda that was meant to be there. Um, so I don't know, like if she keeps writing like that, I'm sure she's going to be working very closely with Ta-Nehisi Coates. Um, I'm pretty sure that she's going to wind up becoming like the, the authority figure on Black Panther pretty soon. And that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Uh, in the meantime, I think I'm just really waiting for her to get there. And, and I'll, I'll have all the patience in the world for that. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for me. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.